Hello everybody, today our lesson is on the method of substitution. So up until now, we have been using mostly graphical methods to find the point of intersection or the solution to a linear system. But today we're finally going to learn an algebraic technique called substitution, which will allow us to find the exact answer or the exact solution to a linear system without having to graph. So you can imagine um, this can be much more useful if all you care about is that, um, that solution. So you can begin by filling in the note and we'll get further in. Okay, so um, graphically the solution is the point of intersection and algebraically this is the coordinate where x and y are the same in both equations. It is the one coordinate that satisfies both equations. So graphing can be inaccurate, whereas algebra allows us to find the exact solution. So let's take a look at this system um, graphically. So we have x plus y over here, x plus y equals 10, okay? So that gives us this um, line here. And then we can also graph y equals three, which is a horizontal line at three. So visually, we can see that the point of interse intersection is at seven, three. All right, but how can we find that algebraically? Well, we can go to here. And so the key for you to understand is that because we want x and y to be the same in both equations, so since y is equal to three down here, we also want y to be equal to three in the other equation. So what we do is we substitute y equals three into equation one. So we say x plus, and now instead of the y, we put three, since they're equal, equals 10. Now we only have to solve for x. So we can subtract three, from both sides, so we get that x is equal to seven. And we already know that y is equal to three. So our solution is seven, three is the solution. Okay, so we could verify this formally or even just in our heads. So seven plus three is equal to 10 and y is three in this coordinate. So that is the solution just like we found graphically. Okay, now we go to example two, which gets to the next level of difficulty. In example one, y was equal to a number. But in this example, y is actually equal to an equation. So same thing though, because we have y is equal to x plus two down here, we can let y be equal to x plus two up here. So we put x plus, now, instead of writing a y, I can write x plus two instead. And that's because it's saying that y and x plus two are equal. So I can write either one to mean the same thing, equals 10. Now, why is this helpful? Because now we have an equation that only has one variable. We can collect like terms and solve for x. So x plus x is two x plus two equals 10. Okay, subtract two from both sides. So two x is equal to eight, and then divide both sides by two, so that x is equal to four. Okay, so now we have to do a little bit of work to find y. So we have to substitute x equals four back into either equation. So we sub x equals four, into either equation. Now I want you to think about why it doesn't matter which equation you use. And that's because since x equals four is part of the solution, you would get the same y value in both cases because that's the point where the x and the y are both equal. So we can sum it to the second equation just because it's in the simpler form. So y is equal to four plus two, which is equal to six. So the solution is four comma six. Okay, so we can check that this is right. So six is equal to four plus two, that's correct. 
and four plus six are equal to 10. Okay, let's take a look at this graphically. So x plus 10 is still our first equation. And then our second equation was y equals x plus two. Okay, and so you can see here that the point of intersection is four, six. So we verified our solution. Okay, so now I have this example three, which says your turn. So this is the point where I'm expecting you to pause the video and actually find the solution. Okay, this is an important part of the process so that you're not just blindly following what I do and not really understanding how to do it. So it is important now that you press pause and try this one on your own. It's just like example two, um, but slightly different. So. Uh, your solution should be 5 comma 4. Okay, now if you aren't able to get this, of course we will take that up tomorrow, um, but please do try. Okay, now I will get to example 4, which is a bit more complicated. So let's think about what is different with example 4 than our previous examples. Well, y is not, there is not a variable already isolated, okay? In our previous examples, you had y equals something, so it was easy to just sub it back in. Both of these are in a different form. So I'm going to call this first one equation 1, so one with a circle around it, and the second one equation 2. And I'm going to just say that I will rearrange equation 1 to isolate y. Now I need to isolate y so I know what to sub in for y in the other equation. So I get 10x plus y equals 35 is the equation. And think about this, I want to get y all by itself. I want him to be alone. So I subtract 10x from both sides. So then I get that y is equal to 35 minus 10x. Okay, so now I want to sub that into equation two. So in equation two, where I see a y, I want to put this 35 minus 10x in instead. So I get 4x minus 7. Now instead of the y, I can write the 35 minus 10x equals negative 23. So now I have an equation where there are only x's and numbers, so I can solve for x. Just be careful about this distributive property here. Notice that this negative 7, it's a negative 7, is outside of the bracket, so it will get distributed to both the 35 and to the minus 10x. So be careful when you're doing that. So I get 4x, now 7 minus 35. Oops, um, is 245 plus 70x equals minus 23. So now I collect like terms to get 74x, and I can add 245 to both sides. So we get 74x equals 222. I divide both sides by 74, and I get that x is equal to 3. Okay, so now that I know that x is equal to 3, I can find what y is equal to. Now remember, you can sub x equals 3 into either equation. So I'll sub it into equation 1 just because it's simpler. So I get 10x plus y equals 35, but I'm going to let x equals 3. So 10 times 3 plus y equals 35. So 30 plus y equals 35. So we get that y is equal to 5. Okay, either you can subtract 30 from both sides, or you can just visually see that 30 plus 5 is what equals 35. So our solution is 3 comma 5. Okay, and you can verify this graphically if you'd like. Here we go, another one that's your turn. Okay, so I'd like you to try this. I will give you a hint to get you started. So this is equation one, and this is equation two. You don't always have to isolate for y. So what I would do is isolate equation two for x. Do that first. You should get x equals 
10 plus 3y. And then you sub that in for x in the first equation. Your solution should be, do I have this? I don't think I have the solution. We'll have to check that tomorrow. Um, but I will we'll double check that with everybody else, see what you got. You can also obviously always check by life, left side, right side. But this is how you should start. Now, think about why I'm isolating for x. It's because x has no coefficient on it. So it's this easiest one to isolate for. All right, let's do example six. So example six, I can isolate either one of these equations for y. It doesn't matter, okay? And um, I will actually, actually, you can actually do it both ways. So what your first choice is, is inconsequential. So that this is equation one, and this is equation two. Let's just say I'll isolate a two for y, okay? So that just means I get y is equal to nine minus four x. And I want to sub that in to the other equation. So I get 2x minus bracket 9 minus 4x equals 4. Again, why am I choosing to isolate for y instead of x? Because y has no coefficient, so I don't have to do any division when I isolate y. All right, now be careful to distribute this negative. You get 2x minus 9 plus 4x equals 4. That gives me 6x equals 13, okay? I added the 2x and the 4x, and then I added 9 to both sides, okay? So then you just divide both sides by 6, and you get x equals 13 over 6, okay? Keep this as a fraction. Do not change it to a decimal. A fraction is an exact value, whereas a decimal is an estimate, okay? So now i got to solve this for y, so I'll put it in... 2 times 13 over 6 minus y equals 4. So I put it into equation 1. Now at this point, you can just use your calculator with the fraction button. But if you're somebody that plans to go on to use higher level math, you should know how to, to manipulate fractions. So this is the same thing as 2 over 1 times 13 over 6. So you just get 26 over 6 minus y equals 4. So at this point, I'm actually going to add y to both sides and subtract 4 from both sides, just so that I get a positive y. I just like that better. I'm just going to move the y over here and the 4 over here. So you get 26 over 6 minus 4 equals positive y. So now I need to get a common denominator, which is 6. So four, 4 is the same as 24 over 6. So y is equal to 2 over 6, which is a third. So the solution is 13 over 6, comma, a third. All right. So this is a clear situation where algebra is more useful than graphics or doing a graphing solution, because it would be very hard to see 13 over 6 and a third as a point of intersection, especially if you are um, just doing it on graph paper. If I do it on GeoGebra, I can get the exact um, solution because GeoGebra will tell me. So if I do 2x minus y equals 4, and then 4x plus y equals 9. Okay, I can see here where the point of intersection is. But notice, think about it, if I didn't have GeoGebra, how could I tell what that exact value was? GeoGebra will tell me what it is, um, but visually you wouldn't be able to see it. So this is an exact instance where it's so important that we know how to use algebra to find the point of intersection. Okay, now here we have two word examples that show using substitution. So Stephanie has five more fish in her aquarium than Brett has. The two have a total of 31 fish. How many fish do they each have? Solve by creating a linear system, which means two equations with two unknowns, and use the method of substitution. So when we create our variables, let's think about what we don't know. We don't know how many fish they each have. So we'll say let s represent 
number of fish that Stephanie has. And we'll say let B represent the number of fish that Brett has. And you know what? I'm fine with you doing this short form like that. So Stephanie has five more than Brett. So Stephanie, it, Stephanie is Brett plus five. And then together, S plus B is equal to 31. So there is my linear system. Now I can sub in B plus five for S in the second equation. So this B plus five, I can sub in for this S, okay? So I get B plus five plus B equals 31. So 2B equals, so again, I can move the five to the other side, equals 26. So B is equal to 13. This means Brett has 13 fish, okay? And now I can find how many Stephanie has by subbing that in. So Stephanie has 13 plus five or 18 fish. So therefore now we can write a sentence. Therefore Stephanie has 18 fish and Brett has 13. Okay. One more word problem and then we get to our general steps. So guaranteed pool repair um, charges $50 for us. So we have guaranteed pool repair. So they charge 50, so their cost is $50 for a service call and then $40 an hour. And then we have Oasis Pool and Spa and their cost is $110 plus $25 an hour for labor. Labor. So when are the costs equal? Okay, so then we should have identified our variables. So we'll say let H represent hours. We should say number of hours. And let C represent cost in dollars. So to find when they're equal, we can set them equal to each other because this represents cost and this represents cost. So we want them to be equal. So 50 plus 40H equals 110 plus 25H. So we want the H's together on the same side and the constants together on the same side. So we subtract 25H from both sides and we can subtract 50 from both sides. So this is something in grade nine we would have done probably in two separate steps, but in grade 10 you can make it a little bit more efficient. So 40 minus 25 is 15H, and then 110 minus 50 is 60. Divide both sides by 15, and you get four. So this means that after four hours, their costs are the same. So you can write a nice little sentence there. So that answers the question. The question just asked, when are the costs equal? If it asked what that cost was, you can put four back into either equation to find the cost. However, notice if the question said something like, when is it better to choose guaranteed pool repair? Or when is it better to choose Oasis pool and spas? A graph would be much better because then you can see when the cost of each is lower. It's a visual representation and can be much more useful. This H equals four only tells us when they're equal, not when each one is cheaper. Okay, so let's conclude our video by just formalizing the steps of substitution. So the first step is to solve one of the equations for one variable in terms of the other variable. So you get one variable all by itself. So sometime that, sometimes that's already done for you, sometimes you have to do it. And you wanna make a smart choice. Notice that I wouldn't wanna rearrange for y in equation two because then I would have to divide five by two and I'd have that yucky fraction, I don't want that. So in this case, I'm going to isolate for this x. So I get x is equal to five minus two y, okay? So now I have one equation that's isolated one of the variables. 
So now I substitute that expression into the other equation and solve. So in other words, I plug this in and solve. So I get three times five minus two y plus two y equals six, okay? So I get 15 minus six y plus two y equals six. So this collects to minus four y, and if I subtract 15 from both sides, six minus 15 is negative nine, so I get y is equal to positive nine over four because negative nine divided by negative four is positive nine over four. Then now that I have one solved for, I substitute it back into one of the original equations. So I can do x plus two y equals five and sub in the y there. So x plus two times nine over four equals five. So that would be x plus nine over two equals five. So x is equal to five minus nine over two. So five is 10 over two minus nine over two, which is a half. So then my solution is x equals a half, y equals nine over four. Now, my last step is to substitute it, if it asks to verify, into both original equations, using left side, right side, to verify that this is the solution. So I do left side and right side for three x plus two y equals six, and I'll do left side, right side, for x plus two y equaling five. Okay, so now I'm gonna actually sub in my coordinates. So I get three times a half plus two times nine over four. So this gives me three over two plus 18 over four. So to get a common denominator of four, this is six over four plus 18 over four, which is 24 over four, which is six. So now I can see there that left side equals right side. So I need to make sure it works here as well. So I'd get one half plus two times nine over four. So one half plus 18 over four, again, a common denominator, two over four plus 18 over four is 20 over four, or five. So there, left side equals right side. So that's the method of substitution. We have some success criteria here. Please review them. That's what you should be able to do as a result of this video. So thanks for watching, guys. I hope you learned lots.